fellow rockers. Do you wanna really rock? If you want to really rock, then you must learn some serious physics, because rock is music and music is a rather obvious expression of physics. If you ask any of these great guitarists, they will all tell you how important it is for them to have a deep understanding of guitar physics. Just ask any one of these great guitarists, and they will tell you how important knowing how to apply Newton's laws of motion to a guitar string is to being able to effectively rock. In fact, Jimi Hendrix traveled to Europe just to study guitar physics. Or so I am told, we will begin with the most important concept of guitar physics. We will study the motion of the guitar string. All rockers must be able to calculate the detailed shape of their guitar strings at any moment after the string is picked. This calculation is ultimately the foundation of all so-called music theory and according to my analysis it is also the secret to great rock riffs and songwriting. Let's begin. Our goal is to calculate the precise shape and motion of a guitar string. That is, if you know how much time has passed since you released the string from the pick, you must have a formula for the shape of the guitar string at that moment. The amount of time after the string is released is called T in this formula. The distance from the nut of the guitar is called X in this formula. The formula itself is called U and we need to discover this formula in order to rock. To discover this formula, we must understand the basic equation governing the shape of a guitar string. This equation is called the wave equation. The solution to the wave equation is the formula we are seeking. This formula is a direct consequence of Newton's laws of motion applied to the guitar string. You are now watching a person explaining why the wave equation applies to a guitar string. If you would like to see the full explanation at normal speed, just follow the link in the comment section of this video. What this person is saying is that we must model the guitar string with some important assumptions. First we must assume that the force of gravity is small compared to the tension force of the string. This means we can ignore gravity and our guitar string will not sag as it hangs between the nut and bridge of the guitar. Second, we must assume that the displacement of the string from its motionless position is small compared to the full length of the string. This means the string is never bending enough to significantly change its overall length and the guitar string will have no sharp bends as it moves. Third, we will assume that each point on the guitar string only moves up and down and never moves towards or away from the nut and bridge of the guitar. Fourth, we will assume that the string offers no resistance to bending. If it did, it would not really be a string, it would be a rod or bar. Fifth, we will assume that there is no resistance to the guitar string's vibration and the vibration will never dampen. All of these assumptions are essential for the construction of the wave equation, however they are not always valid. If you are rocking very hard, you may stretch the guitar string, for example. Regardless, this basic calculation will prove to be accurate enough for all rock except for that tricky math rock emo stuff or anything by Dream Theater. The wave equation is the final product of this lecturer's hard work. This equation governs the motion of most wave-like phenomenon including guitar strings, the sound generated by a speaker cabinet, the motion of drum membranes, and other things important to rock. This equation is called a partial differential equation. It must be solved if we want to rock. The solution to this partial differential equation is not a number, like in algebra. The solution is actually a formula that will tell you exactly what shape your guitar string is at any moment in time which is critical knowledge for any serious rocker. This formula we are seeking is called U in the wave equation. This is so important I am tempted to call it the formula of rock. The formula of rock will tell you how far from the rest position any point on the string is at any time after the string is released from the pick. The right side of the wave equation is related to how the slope of the guitar string is changing. If the angle of the string is increasing as we move from the nut to the bridge, the right side of the wave equation will be greater than zero.
If the angle of the guitar string is decreasing the right side of the wave equation will be less than zero. The left side of the wave equation is related to how much a spot on the string is accelerating. Together, the left and the right side tell us that the string is accelerating the most at the places where the bending of the string is increasing the most. The constant C is a number which depends on the tension on the string and the mass density of the string. The mass density is a number that is available from the string manufacturer. The tension is set by the rocker who is playing the string. C can be interpreted as the speed of wave propagation along the string. Now that we know the wave equation applies to our guitar string we must solve the wave equation in order to learn our formula. Here you are watching a human solving the wave equation for the guitar string formula using a famous technique called separation of variables. If you would like to see the full solution at normal speed, just follow the link in the description below. This human is discovering that there are an infinite number of solutions of the wave equation. We must find only those solutions which do not make the string move at the nut or at the bridge of the guitar. This is called the boundary conditions of rock. Also, we need a solution that matches the shape of the guitar string just before the pick releases the string. This is called the initial condition of rock. The analysis of the wave equation reveals that there are an infinite number of solutions that are constrained by the nut and the bridge. Each of these solutions is called a harmonic. There are an infinite number of harmonics but the size of the infinity of harmonics is far smaller than the size of the infinity of total solutions to the wave equation so we have actually narrowed our search for a solution considerably. The idea that we can have a large infinity and a small infinity is important here and the different sizes of infinity is a good topic for a great rock ballad. Regardless, None of the harmonics describe our guitar string because none of them match the initial shape of the string. So to find our guitar's unique solution we must carefully combine all the possible harmonics in order to match our guitar string's initial condition. The reason this is possible is because the wave equation is a linear equation. This means that the sum of any two solutions of the wave equation is also a solution to the wave equation. It also means that if you multiply a solution by a number, you still have a solution. The process of determining how much of each harmonic contributes to the solution for our guitar string is called Fourier analysis and is a beautiful and elegant technique. Each harmonic has a very specific shape and vibration and each harmonic contributes to the overall solution as we shall demonstrate soon. Also, each harmonic vibrates with its own frequency. In the case of the wave equation we discover that each harmonic vibrates at an even multiple of a fundamental frequency. This is the physical and mathematical basis of what musicians call the harmonic series. It is important to understand that if we had included forces of dampening and some resistance to bending into our analysis, then the harmonic frequencies will no longer be simple multiples of a fundamental frequency. This is called inharmonicity and is noticeable during the tuning of pianos. We may demonstrate this more subtle analysis in a subsequent video. The initial condition for our guitar string calculation will be a 1 mm vertical displacement of the open E string as shown here. The 1 mm displacement used in our calculation will be located 22.3125 inches from the nut of the guitar. At time equals to zero, the shape of the guitar string will be similar to the guitar string depicted here. This is an example of the calculation used in the Fourier analysis of the guitar string with our initial condition. The result of this calculation tells us how much of each harmonic is present in the vibration of our guitar string. This is the solution of the wave equation for the harmonics. Each harmonic is numbered starting from the number 1. The letter N is used in the equation for the harmonic number. The first harmonic is called the fundamental and there are an infinite number of harmonics. The symbols in this expression have important meanings. The L is the symbol used for the scale length of the guitar. For all serious rock, this number is 25 and 1 half inches. 
The letter P is used for the point along the string in contact with the pick at the initial condition of the guitar string. For our calculation this distance will be 22.3125 inches from the nut of the guitar. The letter H is the initial displacement of the string at the location of the pick. For our calculation this number will be 1 millimeter. The part of the formula in brackets is the amplitude of the harmonic present in our solution. This part of the formula depends mostly on the initial condition of the guitar string. Notice that the harmonic number is squared in the denominator. This means that the amplitude of the higher harmonics is suppressed compared to the lower harmonics. This part of the formula for the harmonic tells us how the amplitude changes along the scale length of the guitar. The fact that the harmonic number appears inside the trigonometric sine function tells us that each harmonic has one more node and one more antinode than the previous harmonic. This part of the formula for the harmonic tells us how the string vibrates in time. The fact that the harmonic number appears inside the trigonometric cosine function tells us that each harmonic vibrates at a perfect multiple of the fundamental frequency. We will calculate this fundamental frequency in a moment. It is important to remember that we are seeking a formula that only takes two inputs. The first input is amount of time after the string has been released by the pick. The second input is the distance from the nut we are interested in studying. These inputs are indicated by the letter X and the letter T in the formula. With these two inputs the formula will tell us the displacement from rest at that location in time. Therefore we must substitute real rock and roll numbers for everything else in the formula. Then, we must add all of the harmonics together to get our final formula. This is the answer. This is the formula of rock. It is an infinite sum of harmonics and the mathematical form of each harmonic is on the right side of the big Greek letter sigma. The big Greek letter sigma is the mathematician's way of telling us to add up all the harmonics from 1 to infinity. Since you are a human rocker, you cannot hope to add up all of the infinite number of harmonics. But we shall see that we don't need to use very many to achieve quite accurate results. However, it is also true that the more terms you use, the more you rock. In order to replace all the symbols with real numbers, we will need to specify the detailed nature of the guitar string material and arrangement. We have already chosen the scale length of 25 and 1 half inches as though there was any other choice. For this calculation we used Ernie Ball Power Slinky Guitar Strings. These are great guitar strings and they will really help you rock. In particular, we will predict the detailed motion of the Power Slinky Low E string which is 48 gauge and totally awesome. Just to be clear, this calculation has not been sponsored by Ernie Ball. Ernie Ball has provided the specifications for these strings as well. We will be using the numbers for the low E string with a linear mass density of 7.535 grams per meter. The string will be under a tension of 19.31 pounds. This will give a fundamental frequency of about 82 Hz. This is our final formula. If you insert a distance from the nut and a time after pick release into this formula, you will calculate the displacement of the string from rest at that distance from the nut. Another way of saying this is that this formula contains all the information about the shape and vibration of our guitar string. The formula uses distances in meters and the time in seconds. The formula requires adding up an infinite number of harmonics in order to get the unique solution to the wave equation that models our guitar string. Modeling a sound by discovering what harmonics the sound contains is called harmonic analysis. Harmonic analysis is arguably a foundational principle of music theory and most ideas about how to construct scales can be traced to some aspect of the harmonic series. In particular, the study of temperament can be related to the harmonic series, and we will discuss this in a later video. Now that we have our formula, we shall learn to interpret its meaning. In this slide the red line is the initial shape of the guitar string just before pick release. This drawing is obviously not to scale. The tip of the red triangle is the location of the pick just before release.
The initial displacement from rest at that point is 1 mm and the vertical axis has been scaled for visibility. The horizontal axis is the guitar's scale length in meters. For the benefit of the American rockers, I will state that 25 and 1 half inches is 0 0.6477 meters. The blue line is the shape of the guitar string as predicted by our formula if we only included the first harmonic of the infinite sum. Obviously the formula does not predict the initial shape of the string well at all. It only captures the fact that the entire string has a positive displacement from rest initially. This is because we have ignored all of the higher harmonics in our calculation. Our solution does a better job capturing the initial shape our guitar string if we include the first and the second harmonics. Now the shape predicted by our formula also captures some of the asymmetry of the initial shape. If we include the first three harmonics, the asymmetry becomes a bit more accurate and the calculation matches the initial shape of the guitar string even better. With six harmonics included in the calculation, the prediction becomes rather credible. It is interesting to note that the calculation is the least accurate where the initial shape of the string has a sharp angle. With 20 harmonics, most of the error is located at the position of the guitar pick. With 100 harmonics included, the formula reproduces the initial shape of the guitar string so well that we need to zoom into the location of the pick to see the remaining error. Not only does each harmonic contribute to the shape of the guitar string, but it also contributes to the motion of the guitar string. Each harmonic vibrates at its own frequency and it contributes that frequency to the sound of the guitar string. In this animation we demonstrate how each harmonic is shaped relative to the initial shape of the guitar string and we also see how each harmonic oscillates. The amplitude of each of these animated harmonics is the amplitude as predicted by our formula. You can see that the higher harmonics have lesser amplitudes and some harmonics are difficult for humans to see at the scale of this drawing. Also shown on the animation is the name of the musical interval typically associated with the first few harmonics. We will discuss the relationship between musical intervals and harmonic vibrations in a later video. As we already saw, none of the harmonics accurately capture the initial shape of the guitar string. It takes our formula specific sum of these harmonics to capture that shape. But now we see that each of the harmonics also vibrates at its own frequency and the overall motion of the guitar string must vibrate at every one of these frequencies. We already saw how the harmonics are summed together to capture the initial shape of the guitar string. Now we want to calculate how the guitar string shape changes in time. For this calculation we use our formula to calculate the displacement for every position between the nut and the bridge of the guitar for the time after the pick release. In this animation you can see how the calculated shape of the guitar string changes after the pick release. That animation demonstrates the motion of the guitar string based on our formula. The animation is done with more and more harmonics included in the calculation. As more harmonics are included, we begin to see the detailed predicted motion of the guitar string. What we discover is that the initial angular shape of the guitar string is preserved as the string oscillates and the guitar string also returns to its initial shape after each full oscillation. The initial kink in the guitar string oscillates between the nut and the bridge. The kink travels at approximately 106 meters per second and the kink completes one round trip in 12 milliseconds. If you are a rocker who plays 16th notes at 120 beats per minute then you pick the guitar once every 125 milliseconds. This means the kink has made about 10 round trips before you interrupt the oscillation and start it over with a new pick release. To interrupt the oscillation before it completes a single round trip you would have to play approximately 83 notes per second. For the high E string it is even harder, you would have to play 330 notes per second. Because we did not include the possibility of damping in our analysis, this motion is predicted to continue forever for the ideal guitar string. In our next video, we will add some simple damping to our model.
this concludes our work. We will continue to watch this guitar string simulation uses 26 harmonics. Guitar legends typically use between 10 and 20 harmonics so keep that in mind when you calculate the detailed motion of your guitar strings. It is important to remember that this calculation is quite reliable despite the various approximations we made. For example, the pick does not actually make a hard kink in the guitar string, but if we had set the initial condition to have a rounded kink, the general aspects of the solution would be the same. Also, if you had a strobe light and fast camera, you should actually be able to see your guitar string oscillate as our formula predicts. Now that you know how to calculate the precise motion of your guitar strings, you should be able to rock with a deeper knowledge of your guitar's performance and with this knowledge you should be able to rock very very hard. In later videos we will learn how the harmonic frequencies are affected by damping and the internal forces of the string. These will lead to an harmonicity which humans hate. Also, we will study how this harmonic series is related to the scales used by rock musicians. Thank you for watching this video about this critical rock topic. Please like and subscribe to this channel to learn more about the fundamental physical foundations of rock music. If you have questions, leave them in the comments below and I will ask my human associate to address them.